Hey y'all, Bill, the Hall of Fame collector here. And uh, happy holidays to everybody. Um, decided to feel good enough and uh, drive down to Georgia. Everyone decided to leave uh, the expense uh, of New Jersey and basically uh, most of the family's now in Georgia. So, you know, we're here and uh, just uh, hanging out for a few days, a little warmer here in Georgia. And, uh, but I did want to get a video in for uh, one of my two favorite tubers, friends even, I would say maybe possibly even before YouTube, and that's Jake, Ticket Leprechaun, who you guys know know him as Legends Never Die, uh, who's doing a 755 uh, contest, wanting to know um, just a quick explanation of what we collect and what's our PCs, essentially. Um, and then another uh, video for uh, response for a good friend, Frank, Baseball Hall of Fame autographs. You guys know him, of course. I've known him way before that. And uh, one of the few collections um, that I really admire uh, on YouTube, of course, with the Hall of Fame autographs. So um, I'm gonna do a, uh, I think he wants to know just a story about your, your favorite autograph. And it's very interesting, definitely not my most expensive, but uh, kind of led me down a path. So um, I'll do both of those. Briefly, I don't have my one for Frank, but I'll put up a picture. And uh, I shot some of these things like two weeks ago, so um, they're back in Jersey. But uh, yeah, congratulations, guys, and uh, keep doing your thing. And uh, if I don't talk to you guys, Happy New Year. This is my friggin' collection. All right, and number one priority in my collection, and a thing that I'm actually most proud of, is my baseball. Hall of Fame autograph collection. Um, this is basically all of the non-sports cards related items. Again, many of these things are some of the most valuable items uh, in the collection, um, but uh, very rare. Again, 284 Hall of Famers. I'm up to out of, I think, 341. So, uh, you know, one of the, I would, I would argue one of the best collections, uh, you'll find on the internet of uh, Baseball Hall of Famers. Uh, again, this is the vintage, you know, non-sports card stuff. All right, right here is the Baseball Hall of Fame and Future Hall of Fame uh, sports cards. Again, from A to basically Z. And uh, yeah, in here is all basically, you know, on-card autographs, different players, Future Hall of Famers, right? or great players or whatever and on all the different sets are kind of in here too except for the ultimate signatures which are kind of lumped together um but yeah there you go right here is a pile of uh non-sports card basketball hall of fame autographs um these take up much less room a lot of index cards and uh things like that a lot of stuff not worth being slabbed per se but a lot of slabs as well uh, some vintage items in there, but yeah, there's the basketball non-sports cards All right, right here is the basketball Hall of Fame and future Hall of Fame uh, Autograph cards and sports cards so you can see I have them all a to Z a to T and then W to the end actually over here it, W stops and then I get into non baseball or basketball hockey football you know things that i don't really cover and these are just um rookie cards i don't know why i still have them and all this is my ultimate duels um set i'm working on ultimate duels right there bam 345 basketball hall of fame different players out of 440 ish all right, now we get into 90s here, and uh, the main PC for the 90s is uh, Greg Maddox, where I'm trying to collect every Maddox card from 94 through 01. And as you can see here, this is inserts and parallels, uh, so not base cards. And it starts at 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, all the way 2000, 90, 2000 2001, goes up through about here, and then this is past 2001 or before 2094 uh, just you know ones that i liked um here's some slabs that obviously don't fit and then uh yeah so i kind of have them separated by 
I guess good cards are in mags, and then regular stuff is in uh, you know parallels, and um, things are in top loaders. And then uh, so that's Maddox uh, up through last year, and then this is uh, the Gwyn PC up through last year. Some Griffies over there, yeah. And what you see here is actually pretty interesting. This whole row is all, and actually these two rows here is Manny Ramirez, 90s. Um, from here to here is 2022 Gwyn pickups. Um, again, they'll go into the other bin once I do my end of year video. Um, oddball 90s, all this is and this is greg maddox 2022 pickups that will then go into the other ones after my video year-end video and then over here is all my um sports card pickups uh for 2022 that again after i do my video will get distributed into the other ones so kind of helps me stay organized for my end of year video all right and right here last but not least these are just all random Binders of cards, uh, you know, stuff I collected as a kid, right? Just randomness. Um, you can see Manny Ramirez, Kirby Puckett, Piaz. These are cards I opened up, in, you know, packs as a kid. So I got a miscellaneous that. I think I got a, a book of Maddox doubles. And then, uh, what is this? Yeah, some more random Roberto Alomar's. Griffey, you know, nothing crazy high-end in any of these. Kid stuff, childhood stuff. And then here's, for the 90s Maddox, of course, the other uh, boxes were parallels and inserts. This is all base cards. And then the oversized stuff. But you can see, all base cards, 94 to 01. So there you go, guys. That's the PC. All right, so that's Jake's portion. That's the collection, and that's the concept. It's kind of what I do and how I have it kind of all piled up right now. I do intend to, uh, like, have a room in the future with kind of all this stuff sort of displayed, and I think I will fill a room pretty easily with this stuff. It doesn't look like much on the couch, and uh, it'll be a very expensive room. But uh, in any event, uh, on to Frank's, you know, 1,000 subscribers. Congrats to him as well. And um, I don't have this item in front of me, so I'm just going to have this picture there and I'll explain. It kind of was a turning point in the collection, um, kind of when I went from like just getting um, sticker autographs and cuts and kind of just upgraded um, and started getting really nice pieces. So uh, this just, I just love everything about it. So thanks y'all for watching. Happy New Year. All right, I did a video on this, oh, about a year ago, kind of like a take it to the grave video. And, and this, was the, this was the item, and it hasn't changed. It's my Tris Speaker album page. It's a Mint 9 from the Blattner collection. Uh, it was the first time I kind of went from cuts and, you know, the cheapest things you can find to something more, um, you know, just more special. Um, and th this was certainly it. I uh, love the vintage ink. I love everything about it. I love that it's dated. Um, it was just, it just meant a lot. It's really when I, again, started to, um, you know, I had Ruth cuts and Garrett cuts and that's kind of, this kind of pushed me into, um, you know, getting dated items and, and just more premium, premium pieces, um, that I can feel, uh, happy about owning. And, and so this was, this was a huge item. I love the penmanship. I love how old it is. Um, and it's also one of the first items that I had that, um, was used in a number of publications, right? It's all over. I think it's on PSA DNA's website um, as an exemplar. And it, it also, um, I believe it's in Ron Kirchin's book as an authentic example, uh, among other places. So it's, it's, it's used uh, in certain publications. And I think that's pretty neat also. So there you go. The Trist Speaker, this led to uh, many other fantastic pieces in the collection and kind of, um, I would say, might be the most special, uh, my favorite autograph in the collection. So there you go, Frank. You probably knew this already, but uh, yeah. Thanks you all for watching.